Let's hear from the coach. This is Behind the Beard with Bobby Smirniotis, Forge FC head coach and sporting director. Now, the woman who takes us there, here's Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. Speciale. <laughs> oh, is that how you say that? Where's your yeah. Italian in herself? I don't know. There's no, there's no not Italian much. family? No. I don't think so. No, no. uncles, aunts, <laughs> no. somebody. Okay. No, but I did get new shoes. Thank you for there noticing. You are they new? Yeah. Oh, excellent. I actually, <laughs> I was. I'm gonna, wearing old ones. I was gonna say I have not. These are the most seen these. Shoes. Really? These were the staff shoes. Two years ago, so last year there were those black Nikes. Yep. All right. This year they're the on clouds. So that would have been a few years back. And they've got the orange uh, checks. Orange. Little Air Forces Club for those initials. on audio. Whoa! What? Club initials. H FFC and HBS. That's cool. Even if they're uncomfy. I'm glad you noticed, though. I was going to say, anything different about me? I've had a couple comments, though. I'm catching a lot of flack on my so, outfit today. <laughs> should we get this straight? I don't know if we're on camera here. We are. You work for Forge. I've worn the shirt before. I've worn Why don't you just let me finish, but you know where it's going, right? Exactly. Work for Forge. <laughs> Work at one soccer. You have a job with CONCACAF these days? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm honestly just manifesting that third to complete the trifecta. All right, got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I received a couple comments, and Jazz said I shouldn't wear my blue shoes with my black pants. Someone said I looked like um, a preschooler. I'm <laughs> I usually ask about your practice on the day, but yeah. yesterday I saw on socials you stepped in to training. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> How I was that? that? It's not bad. Did it's you watch your highlights? They posted a video. Uh, my son showed me late last night. Oh, did he? Yeah. It's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. The was comments that Beck said was kind of funny. Added? He, no, he said something like, know your players. or. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Malcolm played a 70-meter ball oh, across yeah, the field yeah. into space. <laughs> Who's yeah. running for that? Me? Yeah. It's a pretty uh, thing we have. Coach Kit plays, I play. You play us in a five-meter radius. Oh, yeah, is that what pl they do? Play the feet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, play yeah, the yeah. feet. <laughs> now we play with this. Yeah. How yeah. um how often will Kit step in as well? Not often. No? No. Like uh, yesterday was probably maybe the second time I've done that this year. Really? Okay, yeah. I was going to say, I feel like I haven't seen it yeah, ever. No, it doesn't happen. Two times a year or will will we see that potentially one more before no, the no, season? No, I think ends? that was the second time this year. Second and final? That's it. <sighs> okay. Well. I had to be there. I know. I can't believe I missed it, there class, okay? Um, yeah, a few things to talk about today. Okay. Let's start with a brief reflection on Cavalry in the press conference. You talked about, you know, your side not necessarily having to capitalize on certain moments or picking your moments, but more so choosing the right spaces against the opponent on the day. And you said that the way that they set up ended up benefiting you and what you wanted to accomplish. So in reflecting on that one, what are some of the biggest uh, takeaways going into Halifax this weekend? Yeah, I think uh, when you look at it, you know, Halifax and every team, you know, gives us a, a different uh, challenge. Um, you know, we're always going to play by our, our principles, but our principles uh, can vary uh, with team to team and where we want to go with the ball. And I think with Cavalry, we did a good job with that, and it, it gives you that blueprint. It's not going to be the same against Halifax, but if you do those right things, if you take the ball into certain zones of the pitch, it, it'll make your one uh, your ability to attack better, to your ability to retain possession and control tempo uh, better, but it will also allow you to be in a better defensive structure for anything that's coming the, the other way. And then also without the ball sometimes, uh, you know, giving up possession and so on, uh, it allowed us to open up certain spaces against Cavalry, and those are also there against uh, Halifax. So I think, you know, when you follow that very well tactically going into another game, it, you know, gives the players, I don't want to say a little more reassurance, they, they have that, but... It, you know, gives them the guidelines of, hey, we do this, good things come, and uh, right now good things have been happening. Mm -hmm. But like I always say, it's, uh, you know, you're always as good as your, your next game and not mm -hmm. what you've done uh, mm -hmm. the week before. Yeah. Well, interesting the, to draw that connection and the transition will work out. The one other thing that I wanted to mention was Borges um, being more inverted. You talked about that as well. And then Benny, of course, centrally in the number nine. What did you like about that setup and how do you think it paid off? Yeah, I just to be honest, uh, maybe we wanted to be uh, a little bit more dynamic uh, in the front and, and moving a lot more um, than just relying on sometimes uh, combinations in the wide areas, um, just so we have a little bit more combinations uh, centrally um, with uh, with Cavalry's uh, defenders and the way they kind of uh, move. And, 
you know, you look at our first goal, and I don't want to say that's why we played like that, but mm-hmm. yeah, that's what we that's wanted to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, it didn't come out of something we just did in training, but it's it's what we wanted to see with uh, those types of guys playing closer um, to each other. So you know, I thought it was it was very good. Borges had hasn't played out in that space for, for a while, um, but on the ball. You know, he's inside in between the lines and the gaps uh, where he's very good. And Benny provided us a, a very good focal point. And, you know, you need to change things up. You need to be a little mm-hmm. bit different. We also, as coaches, want to make sure we've got different things we'll be, we're able to use. You know, Jordan Hamilton has been playing and doing a very good job up front. Um, but with T just uh, being out for, for that game, you know, also, it's okay. What else can we see as we go into this final stretch to make sure that we're confident when we need to mix things up as coaches? Yeah. You mentioned my little one soccer uh, debut for the CPL. Yes. We spoke pregame. Yeah. That was wild. But I just wanted to, before we move on, I just want to quickly address that because maybe some of you have actually watched that pregame interview, yeah. but it was very, very difficult to execute. Why? Because, well, Technical difficulties to start, One. which wasn't ideal. Then, as I'm starting, wind, <laughs> wind, my hair was like through yeah. in my eyes. I've literally you should have had this for look. Like Thirty you seconds. Should have had this look. I know. Next yeah. time. Next time. Yeah. And then three. The behind the beard intro starts <laughs> playing on the video board, and I'm like, Mackenzie, lock in right now. What is the question at hand? I think you had to focus, uh, or I had to focus a little bit more. Because you weren't looking at the video. I wasn't board. looking. You could only hear it. I could hear it. I was looking at the two of us on, what is it, Canada's second largest video board in the stadium? <laughs> yeah. It was number one until a few, uh, a year ago. So I'm looking at that. And then I'm thinking, is somebody playing a joke on me here? Yeah, Is yeah. Mackenzie not on one soccer well, right this now? This is all a prank. Or are we going to be on that jumbo uh, screen? So you could hear it. Oh. I'm watching it. <laughs> And I'm like, this is something right now. So we basically heard ourselves talking yes. as we're trying to do a serious pregame for pre-game one soccer. live interview. <sighs> not something we can edit here. No, not something no. that I could just... So just yeah, <laughs> that was fun. That was funny. And the rainbow in the back. Yes. There were a lot of elements yes, that went were, into that one. That rainbow was there for a while. It was there for time. We, yeah. we did that interview, I want to say, just under an hour before kickoff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When we came out for kickoff, it was still there. Still there. there. Still there. That's what I got. That Crazy was things I noticed before the game. game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Not during the game. It was exactly. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, that was funny. Yeah. And I think we did a good job. Yeah, excellent. I'm telling you, I was watching the whole yeah, thing. So. Yeah, Okay, um, back to our conversation. And I want to say that that was the first time the camera got so close to my face. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Even when you have the headset on? Yeah, they usually get that close. Yeah, they do. For like the side camera line? was like close. Yes, for sideline, it starts. I don't know what it looked like, but. You looked great. I saw it. It was just really up close and personal. (laughs) For sideline, they'll start with both people, including the interviewer. And then as you start to answer, it's one of these. No, I've done a lot of these sideline things. He's never been that close. close. No. (laughs) I know all these guys. All right. But now we'll be well prepared for our next one. September 28th. I'll see you there. Pre-game. You already booked? I'm running it back. Oh, there we go. (laughs) Okay. Let's look at Halifax this weekend. The last time you played them was here about a month ago. You won 2 0 from Ali Hijabapur and Jordan Hamilton. That win got you to the top of the table and contributed to what is an impressive home record. What do you recall from that one and what do you remember liking about the group's performance? Yeah, I could go back and say we had two games close uh, yeah. with uh, Halifax here. So I thought both of them were, were very, very good tactical performances from the guys. You know, very rigid in how we went about things both on the ball and, o- and off the ball. You know, in that first game we played here, we switched things a little bit and gave Halifax a little bit more of the ball. Yes. Um, you know, because that's something, you know, they've done against us the last uh, last while with us drawing a lot of uh, a lot of matches, including the last one in, in Halifax. So I thought it was very good execution from the guys on both sides uh, of the ball and very professional performances. And you know, that's what we need going forward. These are these are playoff games, like I've talked about mm-hmm. in the last uh, couple of weeks. You know, it's they're one and done. You don't get these teams back and. It doesn't matter what the standings look like. It's it's pointless to look at it. Why? Because as important as a game this is for us, that's how important it is for Halifax. And it doesn't matter who you play because, you know, that's a little bit the beauty of this league is everyone is playing for something. You know, everyone's playing for a playoff spot. Everyone's playing to figure out where they're going to be in that playoff spot. There are, some teams are playing to see if they can finish in the top spot. So, you know, there there is no easy match where you look at a lot of leagues uh, in any sport and you see a team at the top 
and a team at the bottom and all you figure okay this is a mismatch there's no mismatch mm-hmm. in this league mm-hmm. well i wanted to get to that because they come off a three no loss to pacific and obviously they're not where they want to be in the no. standings but Prior to that, they beat York 2-1, and then they tied Atletico. So they're proving that they can compete with any team in the league right now. What else do you think is important to consider with this one, especially given that they need this win, as you said, to stay in contention for a playoff yeah. spot? And obviously, you'll go to the Wanderer grounds for this one. Yeah, I think that's one. It's, uh, you know, they're playing for their playoff lives. They're they're at home where they usually show a greater greater uh, deal of energy. So we have to be uh, we have to be prepared for that. And we just have to do our things right. You know, we we got to make sure we go in there and. You know, we're the protagonist on a lot of things uh, that we're doing on the pitch and, uh, and making sure that we can control as much as we can. And, you know, in games like this, first goal is important, especially uh, especially for us and in the state that, uh, that that they're in. So it's something that, you know, we want to look forward to. We'll, we'll see, you know, as we get closer to the match and in the match, you know, where we can find certain spaces on the pitch, where do we need to be on the ball a little bit more, whether we need to relinquish uh, the ball a little bit. And those are the little fine things that we have to see off of the, the sideline. That gives us the best chance of getting three points and making sure we stay where we are. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to reflect on the forwards lineup. I know we talked about the attack, but the conversation about the goalkeepers is one that we've had a lot. We yeah. saw Jazz step up the last game and make important saves, just like yeah. Chris did the one prior. So with this rotation, how ad- advantageous do you think it is to this team? But also what makes each of them unique and suited for a, you know, a particular matchup? Yeah, it's interesting because they're both excellent keepers. You know, they both, uh, they're both proven to be starting goalkeepers uh, in this league. And uh, the thing about them is, is they're unique in their, in their own way. You know, yeah. they each bring these super qualities in, in certain uh, areas of the pitch. Uh, you know, I don't really like telling the opponent what those super okay. areas are and what they're, <laughs> what they're not. But, you know, they're both fantastic. And then they've got these two parts of their game where one guy does it great and then two parts of a game where another guy does it great. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a it's a beautiful challenge to have as a coach. It's a it's always a tough decision on you know who's going. Jasim has gotten a good run of games. You know, with Chris getting injured a, a while back, and he right. and he's done excellent. And yeah, uh, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Okay. Before we switch topics, one other thing that you mentioned in that Cavalry press conference was how much of a roller coaster that this league can put you on, and that's why that you can't preconceive the way in which you'll finish out the season in the lead, and the focus always has to be on the next game. Mm. With that, how do you instill that mindset into the guys knowing that the pressure will just continue to increase through the rest of the season? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you know, we always talk about what we have in front of us or what we immediately have in front of us. And that doesn't matter whether we're playing a league game, a Canadian championship game, a CONCACAF game. It's uh, We don't really uh, change the tone much um, because, you know, it's not about what you do just, uh, okay, in one game. We know it's about what you do over the longevity of, of the season. Uh, and the players who have been here long enough know this is an important part of the year. Um, so they get that. Uh, they understand that. But the mood always changes in, in football and every sport and what you do in each week, mm-hmm. um, right? So if you look too far ahead, you're going to miss on what you have in front of you. If you look back, you're either going to feel too confident or you're going to feel uh, down on yourself. So it's it's pointless. It's, uh, it's what you have in front of you. What we have in front of us is Halifax. The rest comes after that. You know, and, and, and that's the most important thing because you can play all these hypothetical scenarios, but for coaches and players, I think that's pointless. Mm-hmm. I think that's great for fans and everyone else involved in the game to talk about the game and to discuss things and everything. But when you're inside, you know, our area and you're inside of a team, you know, it's not something that you focus on. You focus on what you need to work on. You focus on things you can improve on. You focus on the tactical uh, situations that you foresee in the game coming up. And mm-hmm. if you do that, then the players don't also think about all this other stuff. You know, if if we preach that or the importance of this and where the standings are and so on, that starts playing in a player's head and, you know, there's there's no need for that. Right, okay. Nor is there a need to question it in the press conference. <laughs> Learn that one the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I mentioned it off camera. Yesterday, a couple of the staff and I went to a League One game between Roma and Guelph. Oh, excellent. You knew that it was penalties, though. Did you Club catch Roma? Him? Yeah, they, we just talked about it in the uh, in the coach's room. Oh, so nice. So it was brought yeah, up, yeah, 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 because I know a few of the, the staff members uh, from here. Um, Liam told me he was going to the game. Uh, Brian was going to the game. And, uh, I think Tom Walker. From yeah, there. Tom. A few guys. Me, Shannon, so I, I brought it up in the uh, in the coach's room just to see, you know, what happened in mm-hmm. the game yesterday. Uh, I was told it was a very uh, Crazy. close game. I think Crazy. it was, wh- I don't know if it was 1-0 or so on for Club Roma, and then... 90th, yes, it was like 92nd or 3rd minute. Yeah. 
it was like literally all the fans were up against the yeah. fence ready to rush the field like corner yeah. kicks out toward like the 18 screamer 30 oh, yard screamer yeah. I didn't ask him. Straight to penalties or overtime? Overtime. So overtime, then yeah, penalties. Yeah, two oh, okay. 15-minute halves and then uh, pens. And the Roma, Roma keeper just clutched Excellent. up. Yeah. Great environment? Oh, my gosh. It was unreal. And yeah. you know who was a big contributor to that environment? Who? Ryan. Ryan, there you go. Ryan <laughs> may as well have been on that team. Like, I honestly thought, I don't know where he gets his passion for this from. Do you? Supporting local football. That's yeah. the guy. He was he was making calls from the sidelines. Yeah. It, he was actually like talking to the players from the sidelines in Spanish. Like he was telling them there you go. what he saw. Season seat holder? <laughs> yeah, probably. There honestly. you go. But this is the first time that uh, promotion and relegation is a thing in League One Ontario. Yep. So Roma will go up to the first division with Sigma and the Simcoe County Rovers, Vaughn, and then Guelph now in the second division. So what's your what are your opinions on uh, that introductory to League One Ontario? I mean, it's. To be honest, it's exciting. It's exciting yeah. when you get down to to these games. Uh, there's positives and there's negatives uh, to it as well. And when you get into this uh, pro amateur side of, of football, uh, sometimes then the big uh, onus becomes on winning at all costs. And sometimes you lose a little bit of quality football. Sometimes you may lose those younger players right. um, playing because guys will go for more experienced guys. And and that's not the greatest thing for our league. Now that's me talking selfishly, uh, because as a as a coach in the CPL, I want to see the best young players playing in League One, so we can scout and and get Bring those guys in, yeah. in here. So that's more of a selfish uh, that we look at it. Um, no, but over I'm not gonna. That's not selfish. Though. Oh yeah, but over overall, as a from a competitive aspect, it brings a yeah. very good competitive uh, yeah. uh, spirit to what's uh, to what's going on. It brings these great stories in uh, in this one game that obviously happened uh, happened yesterday. So I mean, there's both sides mm -hmm. of of looking mm -hmm. at it. I see what you mean, though, at the expense of like maybe development. Yeah. But yeah, that was crazy. There was people rushing the field. Yeah. It definitely created yeah. a good atmosphere. There you go. Before we wrap up, I want to finish our conversation on the shoe situation. Okay. Um, you know how at one point we said we got to do a shoe tour? Yeah. I thought it would probably be a good day to do that considering I obviously got new shoes. Yeah. And these are my third pair. Um, I'm, I'm not wearing new shoes, but okay. Uh, yeah. No, you're not. But, like, you also have 11 to choose from. Yes. I think we did count after an episode one day, and it was something around 11 or 12. Six. I think there's six in that corner, Corey. One pair behind the couch here. Seven. And there's either five or six inside that door. What do you think are the need for that many pairs? Shoes? Yeah, like in what situation do you need that many? Yeah, just switching things up. Yeah. Okay. Something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, game day, you need a pair of shoes. Yeah, what are your game day shoes? Have you ever seen me wear black shoes during games? I actually don't know. I don't really no. look at your feet during game uh, days. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no. Uh, it's always something different i probably yeah, yeah. got probably got four or five pairs that i rotate through games okay right now the fall will change mm. right halifax grass could be wet mud so you got to stay away from the white shoes oh good point right? okay okay so it's every place has its a uh, different uh, yeah, different yeah. shoe listen okay we'll circle back when we have shoe rack and next week is week 20 oh, of excellent. behind the beard 20 do but, you remember but we're on week 27 of our yeah, training whatever. cycle for the record, last season when we hit week 20, yeah. I brought you something. So it would oh. only be fitting if I repeat the cycle for the second year. Milk for the cappuccinos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or your lattes? Yeah. Right? Lattes. My cappuccinos. Man. Yes. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good stuff. See you then. 20. This has been Behind the Beard with Mackenzie Barwell and Bobby Smyrniotis. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. <laughs> so... This happens often, actually. I love how it's not even like he's just having a conversation right now. Somebody knocked on the door. Bobby's just taking a quick break. One of us is serious about the podcast. It's not him. I'll make a coffee. Wait around. Oh, hey. <laughs> Back. Just a little uh, free coffee.